Hawaii today. Hosted by Hello. Mike, How are the you guys? big cheese. Yeah, fine, thank you. Oh, you? great. I'm doing great, man. You know, I've been playing up your music, and I tell you, what a great job you did on this brand new record, your first record, Path of a Shadow. You know, you've given people a little Thanks. sample over the last couple of years of what's coming, but this is like, you know, a whole focus of storytelling, in my opinion. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great. <laughs> exactly what we're aiming for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of, if I had to, if somebody said, you know, well, how would you describe pressure? It would be almost impossible for me to describe the band because you don't hold to any one theory or any one sound, any one genre. You kind of got everything going on at one time and it works. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's the kind of the idea. We always start our our songwriting process with, with the lyrics and then we, we, we take our influences from the the genre and the style that fits the story. So I mean, if you have a uh, uh, more angry, then you have a harsher sound, or if you have a more relaxed, then we take the inspiration from that. So so we don't stick to one sound <laughs> or one style. So we try to enhance the story by using the correct style of music. That's why we call it like story metal. That, that's a great name for it because you know every song does tell a story I mean is a lot of it based on you know reality of where you are how you're feeling at the time or is it actually you know fictional storytelling sometimes um, it, Simon you can you can take that one because you you write the the stories from the beginning yeah the, the uh, every story has uh, are based on a true event uh, nothing is left to the um, to the imagination on that one. We have a, an uh, old leathery book that I bring with me everywhere that I call the book of uh, metal stories. So I go out and I experience a lot of things. I throw myself into every situation and uh, yeah, if, if I <laughs> if I should uh, be frank with you, that has gotten me into some really uh, bad trouble sometimes <laughs> but uh, well uh, uh, that, that's also good <laughs> because then you have more stories to tell but yeah no no the, the, the short answer is that every, every song that we do are based on a true story a true event but we have chosen to uh, but we uh, by secrecy we don't um, always tell who is the person or event yeah uh, that's good. Leave a little mystery because there's no mystery left in music anymore. Everybody kind of knows what they're getting and when it's coming. I like not knowing. I like guessing. I like using my imagination to figure out what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way of doing it. You know, talking about the band, I mean, when was the album actually done? Because, you know, a lot of bands had their music already done before this pandemic took hold about a year and a half ago. And they've been waiting for it to kind of like ease up before they release the record. So have you been working on this record for the last year or so? Yeah, we actually we started working on the record a little bit before the pandemic struck. Uh, because we are a pretty young young band, uh, we met uh, 2018, and when we met, we didn't do our own music. We we rewrote re, re, re covers uh, to make them more like rock and roll and translate them into Swedish and give them a totally other meaning than the original lyric was about. And um, when we started to record them, because we thought oh, it would be nice to record some of this and, and put it out there, um, Simon started to rearrange one of the songs really much. So we, we took away all of the chords, we took away all of the rhythm, we took, we changed everything, and we said there's nothing left of the original, nothing at all, not the lyrics, not the meaning of the lyrics, nothing. And we thought this is much better than anything else we've done so that's when we started to walk the path to to write our own music and uh, and um, Simon is the the key to write write everything um, and and it took a, a while for us to even though we don't have one sound and one genre there is a little bit of a red thread going through it so so we have we have worked maybe took one and a half year to to find 
the kind of sound that we thought suited us and suited the songs. Was there a lot of trial and error coming up with that sound? Did you kind of have a direction from the beginning that you just had to kind of fine tune, or was it just, hey, let's just try this out and see where it goes? Yeah, kind of the the last the one we try this and see here where it goes. Normally we record something and uh, then we take it home and listen to it for a few days and we say this was really good or no, uh, let's do it again. <laughs> Yeah, sure. And I, I, I also think that that the the main problem we had in the beginning is was that we actually tried to get a unified sound genre style, and uh, so we, we we tried to oh should we mold all the songs into the one you know, ACDC like sound or something like that, uh, but we didn't, and and that when when we when we started to releasing those. Uh, uh, we, we, um, removing Singles. those hurdles, yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, the, the, we, when we uh, uh, didn't care anymore for trying to just sound like one simple sound, we, when, when we agreed that okay, our sound is that we don't have a sound. <laughs> 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 if, if, uh, I mean, one of the most uh, interesting things I think that the guys in the band think that uh, when. Uh, I usually, when we come to rehearsal, and they know there is something going on, because I, I usually start with, okay, guys, uh, something happened, mm-hmm. uh, and then they know, okay, you have uh, you have rearranged the song totally, or you have done something. Okay, what have you done now? So yeah. <laughs> have you ever brought a song to rehearsal and the other members of the band just listen to it and say? Whoa, where are you going with this? This <laughs> is so far away from anything I could imagine. But yet you work on it and you make it work into a song? Um, several times, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I can agree. And I, I normally, there could be times that when I think that, but I won't say it because I want to give everything a chance because you, you don't know if you don't try. You have to, to. There are a few of the songs when I heard it the first time, I thought, all right, what should we do with this? But then we start working with it, and, and uh, almost all the times we, we are really, really, really satisfied. Yeah. You know, with, with the new record, from what I understand, you actually recorded the record in three different languages, if I have that correct German, yeah. Swedish, and English. Now, you know, Words can translate differently in every language, even like when you when you're singing. I mean, the way it sounds. I mean, I would think it would be really difficult taking one song that you've written in a certain way, and do you have to play with it so much that it doesn't sound right anymore when it's in another language? That would be vocally more than anything else uh, for all of. I mean. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's um, uh, kind of a hard thing, but uh, also I, I enjoy it, and uh, and I enjoy uh, the, the different languages, and we. we First, when we started out, we we thought of doing everything in only Swedish, and then we said, "Ah, well, let's do some of the songs in English because we are a story metal band and we want to tell stories and we want as many people as possible to to hear the story, not only feel the story because the music will make you feel the story, but we want people to be able to hear the story as well." And uh, one of the songs uh, we, we said it just for fun. Uh, this song would do really good in German, and it's "Come Here," the, the German song on the album. Um, so we, we 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 contacted a few German people and asked them to help us translate the song. And we, when we did that, we I I, I seriously don't think we ever been playing or. Uh, uh, singing the the Swedish version ever again because uh, w- the, the German version was so much better than the Swedish wow. and and we think it's because to some of the songs the German language will fit better because the German language is a harder language not only to speak it's a harder it f- you you feel more angry when you speak German you don't have to be but you you sound a little bit more angry and then you have the Swedish uh, language in the middle and then you have the English worst uh, English uh, uh, that is the nicest one <laughs> so depending on what song we are gonna <laughs> perform we, we we will probably choose the language we, language um, 
Yeah. Also. I get that because everything that's said in German sounds angry no matter what it is. It could be I love you and it sounds angry. <laughs> so I completely understand that. But that's a really difficult feat to do. And when, when you think back maybe 40 plus years ago in the 70s and the 80s when, you know, rock and metal were like really big and taking hold and really, you know, dominating the whole world. Every band, no matter where they came from, you know, they forsake their native tongue to always put everything in English because I guess they felt that was where the market would be, you know, in the United Kingdom and in America. But today, since like bands are just singing, you know, from wherever they come from and writing in their own language and people don't care. They just love the music. If it's good music, they're going to sing along in Sweden and German. They're going to sing along in any language that it comes out in. They'll learn it and they'll sing along to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a great thing. So now, I mean, I don't know how things are where you are. I mean, things over here are loosening up. Bands are starting to play out again, get hit the road, and they're touring and doing shows. Is it is it okay to go out and start playing over where you are right now or throughout the rest of Europe? Simon, uh, well, you've been uh, quiet for a while, so yeah, I, I give it I'm <laughs> just sitting here relaxing. No, the, the, um, um, Sweden is actually right now... Uh, from the first of July, from today, actually, it's it's um, opening up m much more. The um, the restaurants and the clubs here has been under heavy restrictions, but they are loosening up now. So it's uh, actually f just now that it's okay to start to book shows again. Good. And you know, talking about the band playing live, you are definitely the most different band in the world because you're kind of forsaken the bass play and the drummer. Went with the two guitar attack, and I mean, how does that work out live? I mean, I know you could do it, you could pre record, you have drums on machines and everything, but would you ever look to make it like a four or five piece band, or do you kind of like the way things are going right now? Because it is completely different than anything anybody else is doing out there. Uh, yeah, but the, the thing is that we, um, we are actually, as I said before, we are a story metal band, and the the main focus for us is not to put on a standard heavy metal show. We want to give you a story metal show. And our live performances is as different as we are as a band. Uh, uh, one of the components that we use uh, is that we also have uh, a heavy focus on a video playing in the background for our shows. That we also use in the shows to play and to, to, to enhance the story, actually. So we have um, images telling the same story as Olaf do on stage, as, and we interact with the video, and that takes the main focus of, like, a drum set or a bass player for that kind of thing. And we, uh, our, our bass player uh, that we are using, it's, um, he's actually from Argentina, so that would be hard for us to rehearse with him if we were to be in Sweden. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and as for the drums, I do the drums, and I can cannot do both drums and guitars at the same time, so that would be a quite easy shoes. Uh, so, and, and if you were to have a large drum set or a large, um, uh, yeah, a large instrument in that way, that would um, take the focus out of the visual components from the video. So... Uh, regarding our story metal, we uh, think that our settings are perfect for that. Yeah, you really are like putting a whole theme around it where you don't want any kind of distractions to take away from the actual lyrical content of the songs. Because that is the main focus of what the band is about. And I think it's completely original and, and so different. I mean, really, nobody's doing anything like that where it's more of an experience to see you live than just going to like a live concert, you know, listening to music. It's, it's visual as much as it is, you know, musical. Yeah, we, we do a lot of focus on the visual part because storytelling, a good storyteller, you know, if, if you go back to when you were a kid and, and you were listening to someone read you a story and that person could uh, imitate voices and he could do things and, and you were enchanted. You didn't need YouTube. You didn't need uh, uh, the heavy 3D game graphics. You just needed someone to read from a book. And if you enhance that with heavy duty story metal and a good lyric and a good storytelling and visual comment, then you will have true enchantment through storytelling. I, I cannot agree more. I mean, at the band today, I mean, do you have a new guitar player in the band? Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We Patrick? have a new guitar player. Yeah, Patrick, yeah. Oh, so email is gone. He left the band? 
Yeah, it's uh, he had a really, really good job offer, uh, <laughs> and he couldn't say no to that. So yeah, yeah. That that seems to be one of the hardest things today about keeping a band together. A lot of people think that it's you know the members are fighting, they don't get along, they're not happy with the music. But it's really it, it's hard to to survive in the business. You you need a job. You know it's not like the old days where you could just kind of throw everything into a van and, and take off and hope you make it. You know the reality of life kind of gets in the way today. Do you find that's the most difficult thing about being in a band is finding members that are dedicated to put the time and energy into what it takes to make it happen? Um, yeah. That- yeah, that's a hard thing actually, and and we, that's one of the the one of the pillars of story metal, because we we need the story, we need the project, but some of the band's members, if if we were to use, if we were to tour Argentina, we would have our bass player on set, but we can have him in the background. It doesn't matter. We can have any of these. If Olaf was sick, we could have uh, we could have him on video, uh, and we could still put on a show. Yeah. The 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 main thing for us is to be able to perform the message, not who is actually performing the message. We want to give you the message and give uh, have have the audience, the listeners, to use our music as tools to handle different kind of pressures around you. So the, the main focus for us, it's not the band members, even if we are the best of friends here, we, we actually have all focus on the show. And I mean, the business is really hard. I mean, I, I work as a full-time musician. And, and for me, it's I, I give guitar lessons and I, I do some session work. and. I don't know how much my paycheck will be for each month or even for things. And, and when, when and when this struck, the pandemic struck. I mean, my my income really lowered. And 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 but but being a musician today, it's not about getting the big numbers, because uh, that that has to be. Uh, yeah, then you then then you are not in the right business if you are playing in <laughs> in this genre and sure. um, uh, anymore if if you are not in the big in the big five or something. Like that. True. Uh, the, the business part of it does get in the way for a lot of bands to create creativity-wise. I'm glad that doesn't really affect you because you do put the music first. You do put what you're doing ahead of everything else. And the big news is, is tomorrow you're releasing a single off the new album. So that's got to be uh, exciting for you. People are going to hear a brand new song tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that would be a pretty different song uh, from all of our <laughs> other songs. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit of a sarcastic uh, satirical, yeah, sat- yeah, satiric, sorry, satiric song. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you heard uh, heard it yet. I've heard it. You know, I think the artwork <laughs> on it kind of explains where it's going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you look to the, we will put a subtitled video on YouTube. Uh, we're just awaiting the last things, so you will get a subtitle and you will get all of the lyrics. Yeah. So you can understand exactly what it's about. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> the, the, the fun thing is, I, for for everyone to know, it's um, it's called Femitria, and that's 2:55 a.m. and that's the usually closing time of the bars in Sweden. Ah. And we all know the, we we all know the type, you know, the desperate guy or gal, yep. or that kind of thing, had a little bit too much to drink, <laughs> and it's closing time, and they don't have anyone with them to take home. And they get really desperate. And as the drinks flows in, the wisdom flows out. So this is their <laughs> anthem. And um, yeah, uh, Olaf did a research for I don't know how many days you did research for the absolutely worst pickup lines that ever was invented. And yeah. Did, did you guys <laughs> spend a lot of time at the bar at 2:55 a.m. to do your research? Uh, no, no not to do the research, but <laughs> do all the stuff. Before, before, uh, yeah, the, 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 for a few, a few years ago, yeah, we did a little, lot of research, but not uh, right before the song. I think we 
we have enough research. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the fun thing is, I, I, I mean, I've been playing in, in different party cover bands for a long time and touring around Sweden. Uh, and the, the main thing is that you play until closing time and then you rig down. And that's when you see all these guys crawling around, prawning. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've heard all the comments. I, I promise you that. Uh, yep, yep, I do. Uh, it yeah. makes a great song. Hey guys, I'm going to let you go in a few minutes. I, I know it's a little later there than over here. But, you know, where's the best place for anybody to pick up the right gig, keep track of what's going on with the band? And tomorrow they'll be able to hear this brand new single from you guys. Yeah, the the best thing is to we you can follow us on on any of the of our socials. You just enter Pressure Sweden into Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or any of your choice, uh, and uh, you can find all the links and all the good th- stuff on Pressure Band. That's our website. Great, Simon Olaf. It was great talking to you guys today. The best of luck with this new record. I'm looking forward to more from you guys in the future. Great to be here. You too. Take care, my friends. Have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you. Sen kan du sova av